The driver drove off the road onto a sidewalk and into a tree behind me, taking the lives of two. And just hours later, you can see here, people have been putting candles, teddy bears, flowers, and crosses in memory of the lives taken too soon. A family member reached out to us and shared the names of those killed as 19-year-old JJ and 10-year-old Kaylee. She says on the page, JJ was picking up his little sister from school Wednesday afternoon when a driver drove off Panama Lane near 8th Street and hit and killed them. Bakersfield police are now saying the driver was 46-year-old Lisa Kaur. She's accused of being under the influence of controlled substances when she hit JJ and Kaylee. According to a press release, this is the the fourth time CORE has been charged with DUI. Unfortunately, a lot of people do everything but drive a car, whether they're on their phone, texting, playing with the radio, dealing with their children, or drugs or alcohol. Um, that happens a lot, unfortunately. Our cameras caught what appeared to be prescription drug bottles on CORE's car. Eyewitness News hasn't confirmed whether they are related to the crash. These pedestrians weren't doing anything wrong. They are minding their own business. The only thing I can tell you is that when you're on a roadway, whether it's a sidewalk, crossing a street, whether you're in a crosswalk, an unmarked crosswalk, you need to have your head up on a swivel, looking around, and paying close attention because your life depends on it. Police say when Corey is cleared from the hospital, she will be booked into the Kern County Jail on two counts of murder, DUI, and driving a car with a suspended license from a DUI conviction. Panama Lane and the surrounding streets are completely open now. Ballard says JJ was a smart and kind protector who would do anything for you. And Kaylee was a sweet, bright, and loving girl. We have a link to the GoFundMe page on our website, bakersfieldnow.com. Live in Bakersfield, David Kaplan, Eyewitness News. Community members say they're demanding immediate justice for Orrin and Orson West. I felt like I just sank so low and it's so painful because those weren't my kids, but it felt like they were part of me. A vigil to mourn the missing toddlers, Orrin and Orson West, but this time with some answers. These aren't the results that we would have wanted as a community, but they're in the kingdom of heaven. The family lost these young men, but the community feels like they've lost these young men as well. And, uh, you know, tonight we hold our children tighter. From the beginning, the community has been a major part in seeking justice for the boys. California City High School senior Emily Wood and her mom went looking for Orrin and Orson the day after they went missing back in December 2020. To have countless people out there in the cold, shivering, and some people got cold, some people got sick from that. And to just have that happen knowing that we were never going to find them. Neighbors in California City report never seeing the boys. Nick Hill, the president and CEO of the Black Chamber of Commerce, attended searches, vigils, and set up a podcast to talk about the investigation. He says the adoptive parents did not join in. They did not want to be involved in the search. They did not want to be involved in the interview process or anything else like that. You know, we found that very peculiar from the very start. He says now all that the family and community want is closure. All the agony of not knowing, you know, and being close to the family, you know, and see how this affected them in a personal way. You know, it took a toll on everyone that was involved. And we'll have more information on Trezell and Jacqueline West's arraignment tomorrow morning. Eyewitness News will be there at 8 a.m. with your full coverage. In downtown Bakersfield, Savannah Welch, Eyewitness News. Bear break-ins have become a common occurrence for many here in the Pine Mountain Club over the last few months, as many bears have been coming out in search of food. None of the people I spoke with were comfortable with being on camera, but they still wanted to share their experiences. But to see a 400-pound bear staring at you through your sliding glass door, um, is a rather frightening scenario. Black bears have been damaging many people's property in this mountain community. Harris Colise lives in the area with his wife and three-year-old son. He thinks the problem is residents feeding the bears. The bear blew open my door. It felt like my house was going to break down. It pushed it open like it was nobody's business. Um, got inside the room. I use it for storage. It's locked. It's dead bolted. And it was still able to break through like like nothing. Colise and other residents say they tried reaching out to law enforcement and Fish and Wildlife, but nothing is being done by officials. However, Fish and Wildlife says they have taken action, but some things simply aren't feasible, like relocating the bear. This is because of their tendency to travel back to their home range, even if it's hundreds of miles away. Instead, Fish and Wildlife is taking a less invasive approach. We've been um, trapping, uh, tagging, and collaring 
these bears and then releasing them. And the reason we do that is because we want to keep, we want to have a record of, of, which, the, of which bears are causing problems. Connie Balden is another resident I spoke with. She says one break-in resulted in her garage door being torn out. She also believes humans feeding these bears are making the situation worse. And although she doesn't want the bear dead, she just wants it gone. It is not my desire to euthanize a bear. I love bears. I'm an animal advocate. But we have to start somewhere, and that start has to be stop feeding them. Others want Fish and Wildlife to approve depredation permits, which would allow residents to shoot the bear if it enters their property. However, Paulia says these permits are mainly issued for bears aggressive towards humans and not for break-ins. That's property damage. That in and of itself, what you described, wouldn't necessarily, necessarily be a public safety issue. That would be a property damage issue. And it's serious. Paulia says the root cause of most human conflict with bears comes from them getting used to having access to food. He says the best ways people can protect their property is by making sure they're remembering to lock up their trash, avoiding leaving pet food out, cleaning up fallen fruit, and cleaning their grills to avoid attracting these bears and hopefully reducing the chance of break-ins. In the Pine Mountain Club, Celine Stevens, Eyewitness News. These girls put their creations to the test here at Edwards Air Force Base. The program, Mighty and STEM Sisters, is meant to inspire a path to science and engineering. We don't get this often, especially like, like at school. Like at school at all. Like they like announced this to us and they picked us. The girls don't get recognized that much, so I mean Yes. It's, Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since last summer, they've been perfecting their rockets for the American Rocketry Challenge, the world's largest rocket launch competition. The rockets hold eggs. Their task? To shoot that rocket off sky high and try to keep those eggs from breaking. All right. Their mentors say they nailed it. All four launches did really well. So I was, I was just very proud to be a part of it and very impressed by the girls. It's so great to be able to give back to them the way that like mentors gave back to me when I was studying in school. So I think it's just one of those beautiful full circle moments. Qualifying teams get to go to Washington DC for the national championship. The director of the program says she wants to see more women in STEM, especially here in Kern County. There is underrepresented students, minority groups um, in the STEM field. So we base it on those were the, our top priority, uh, women of color. Flora says this opportunity can open doors. You take a fresh group of girls and you give them the exposure, you provide them with the resources and you see what they amount.